folks, Scott and Stephanie here with Club Fearless. When we're out on the road exploring the country on wild adventures doing crazy stunts with our friends, sometimes we have to travel to remote wilderness areas where gas stations are few and far between, and it can be a long way between fuel stops. With a full load, we get around 12 and a half miles per gallon on our four-wheel drive Ford Super Duty, so this gives us only around 300 miles of range with our standard 25-gallon tank. So when we started researching ways to increase the distance we could travel before stopping, it didn't take long to discover Titan, the industry leader in high-capacity fuel tanks. For our needs, we chose a 60-gallon fuel tank replacement and two additional 15-gallon sidekick tanks to go into our refurbished M1102 military tactical trailer. With the three additional 5-gallon fuel tanks, we now have a total of 105 gallons of fuel and a whopping 1,200 miles of range. In the next two videos, we will walk you step by step through the process of removing the 25 gallon factory tank from the Ford F-250 and installing the 60 gallon Titan tank. And we will show you how to mount the sidekick tanks as well. These can go in the bed of your pickup truck or in the bed of any trailer that has wheel wells. Are you ready? Let's get started. Before we begin, we highly recommend going to the Titan website where you can find very clear step-by-step -step instructions which you can download and print out. Make sure to download these instructions for the latest and most up-to-date information and all the tools you will need to complete the job. Also, you may want to get someone to help you or even hire a professional truck shop to install this tank. Special thanks to the Custom Truck Shop at Port St. Lucie, Florida for helping us get this tank installed properly. Our mechanic Tony was fantastic. Titan says the job should take about three to four hours. Tony had it done in around 90 minutes. The first step to do is the parts inventory. You don't want to get halfway through this job and find out you're missing a part. So carefully open the box and remove the contents. In this first box, we have the front bracket assembly. And in the second box, we have the back two brackets, which are identical to the OEM brackets, except they're a bit deeper to compensate for the larger tank. The next package contains the tank nipple and the replacement o-ring. Make sure to use this o-ring as the factory o-ring will not work with the Titan tank. Next remove the tank itself and inspect for any possible damage done during shipping. Finally you should have two anti-wear pads that fit under the two rear brackets which support the majority of the weight. Next, raise the vehicle, making sure to use the most stable points of support. Now you can remove the safety plate that is located on the side of the frame, which covers the fuel tank. There are a total of six bolts to remove. You will need a 13 millimeter socket to remove them. Next, place the transmission jack beneath the tank. Use wooden blocks to create a flat surface if using a transmission jack as to not damage the tank. Next, loosen the belly straps using a 13 millimeter socket and make sure to keep the factory bolts as the Titan kit does not come with new frame bolts. Lower the tank a few inches so you can get access to the fill line. Using a flashlight and extending mirror will help you see what connectors you need to get loose, how you need to orientate your hands, and what you need to do to get them to release. This is the connector for the fuel pump. This little red tab has a fat side the fat side has to go out. If you do not release this tab, you will not get it off without breaking it. You will see two fuel lines. The blue is the fill and the yellow is the return. To remove the fill line, push in on the blue clip, push down on the connector, and then lift up. A small amount of fuel will probably drip out, so watch your eyes. Now would be a good time to remind you cloth mask will not protect you from inhaling dangerous fumes. So make sure to only perform this job in a well ventilated area. We also recommend using a large shop fan to help dissipate the fumes. Repeat the process for the return. Pull out on the yellow clip, push down on the connector, and then squeeze the yellow tab and lift up a bit with a slight twisting motion. It should pop right off. Next, remove the two clamps that secure the fuel line using an 8mm socket. After you've removed the clamps, use a pair of channel locks or large pliers to grab the rubber hose and give it a slight twist to break the seal. It'll come right off. 
Wrap a safety strap around the tank and secure it to your jack. Slowly lower the tank all the way down. If there's any fuel in the tank, make sure to use a spotter to help balance the load. Now it's time to remove the fuel pump or sending unit from the old tank. You will need a mallet or large hammer and a flat blade screwdriver or pry bar. Place your flat blade on the lock ring in a near horizontal position and begin tapping on it in a counterclockwise motion from right to left. It should come right off. But before removing the fuel pump, make sure to wipe down the surface thoroughly. We don't want any dirt or debris to get into the tank because we will be reusing this fuel. Next, raise the fuel pump slowly, watching for the orientation of the float. The float is a device that raises and lowers with the level of your fuel to determine your fuel level. If you bend this arm even slightly, your fuel gauge will not work correctly. You'll have to take it into the dealer to get it repaired, so be careful. Now this is very important. Do not use the old factory O-ring. As you can see, the orange Titan seal is much larger. If you use the old O-ring, you will have a leak. Next, remove the fuel fill hose and place it on the new tank, but do not tighten it down. Remember to cover your old tank so no debris falls into the fuel. This will also help prevent excess fumes from spreading into your work area, which could cause dangerous vapor inhalation or even an explosion. Apply Seal Glide on the O-ring to help it slide into place and make an airtight seal. Remove the protective cover from your new tank and place the lubricated O-ring in the groove around the opening. Next, prepare to install the fuel pump. Make sure the float or fuel level sensor is facing towards the back of the tank or towards the highest point of the tank. Notice the locator tab. It can only go in one way. Line up the tab with the groove in the tank and you will be in the right position. Next, place the retaining collar on top of the sending unit. The retaining collar has a small shoulder. The shoulder faces up. Find the notch groove on the collar and using your mallet and the flat blade tool, rotate the collar clockwise or to the right to lock it in place. Make sure the tab is pushed as far as it can go in the groove or the tank will not seal. Next, move the new Titan tank into position on the lift and place the safety strap around the tank and lift it to secure it in place. As you raise the tank, make sure to hold the fill hose backwards so you can get it over the frame rail when the tank is in its final position. Next, attach the fill line using an 8mm socket. Moving to the other side of the tank, now attach the vent line. Again, this requires an 8mm. Now move to the front of the tank and attach the fuel lines. The yellow goes to the rear. Push down and then squeeze the locking mechanism located at the bottom. The blue line goes towards the front and snaps on easily with no additional locking mechanism. Finally, attach the electronic control mechanism and make sure to squeeze the red safety tab so it doesn't work its way loose. Next, take the largest belly strap and insert the rubber pad with the groove side down so it fits in the channel properly. Make sure it's centered as well. Remember to keep the factory bolts as the new tank does not come with them. Place the longest strap on the rear of the tank and hand tighten the inside bolt to hold the strap in place. Next, place the outside bolt on your driving socket and push up, guiding the bolt into place. Remember to only thread the bolt a few turns. Don't screw them in all the way. This will prevent bolts from being misaligned on the front. Now prepare to attach the smallest belly strap to the front of the tank. Obviously, we can't attach the middle strap yet as the jack supporting the tank is in the middle and blocking this area. As there is no factory location for the front strap, we will use the body mount as our point of attachment. First remove the body mount bolt that is in alignment with the front strap position using a 15 millimeter socket or wrench. Position the strap above the frame rail using the L-shaped portion of the strap to hold it in place. This strap does not use a rubber pad. 
Now place the bracket that will connect the strap to the body mount. You may need a spotter to help lift the tank slightly while you put the bolts in place. Next tighten the bolts down using a 15mm wrench or socket. Make sure this bolt is tight. This is the one that holds the cab onto the frame. Now that the tank is secured at the front and back, you can remove your jack and prepare to attach the middle belly strap. Remember to place the additional rubber pad with the groove side down inside the belly strap and make sure it's centered. You will need a 12 inch extension for your socket to secure the bolt on the inside of the tank. Don't tighten the bolt down completely. You may still need some slight adjustment to make sure the tank is in place properly. This last bolt is a bit of a challenge so we use our jack to help raise the tank slightly. After the bolt is secured, go back and tighten all the strap bolts. Now you can lower the jack and lower the vehicle. If you have any leftover fuel like we did, now's the time to siphon it from the old tank into the new one. For this process, we used a jig. The mechanism works by a ball bouncing up and down inside a hose, which pulls fuel up and doesn't allow it to come back down. Once the fuel is flowing, gravity and suction take over. A special note, when you restart your vehicle for the first time, you will need to prime the fuel line by turning your key to the on position without engaging the starter. Do this two or three times, waiting approximately six to seven seconds between turns. Then on the third time, turn the key all the way over, engaging the starter. This process allows the electric pump to pull fuel through the line as some of it is drained out during the install. The last step is to fill the tank and test it for leaks. And there are no leaks. If you have any questions, Titan has a dedicated team of engineers and specialists who will be glad to help you if you run into any problems. Just give them a call or send them an email. In our next video, we will show you how we installed two 15-gallon sidekick tanks in our recently restored M1102 Tactical Military Trailer. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and check out our website to see our past adventures, future plans, and for some really awesome hats, stickers, patches, and challenge coins. Thanks for watching. See you next time.